Hey everybody, Steve Bogrand here, Basic Fitness LLC. And today, I had a question from a client and I thought it would be a great opportunity to answer it in video form. And so, my client's question was, what is the difference between creatine and creatinine? And so, this was actually had me go a little bit further into the answer, but let's start with the basics. So, what is creatine? Now, I'm sure a lot of you have heard a lot about creatine, and for those of you who are in the bodybuilding community, there's really no need to inform you. But for those of you who are new to physical activity, bodybuilding, sport, performance, what creatine is, is it's part of your body's energy systems. We have something called ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and then we have something called CP, which is creatine phosphate. So essentially, when you have ATP, uh, the most energy is stored in the third phosphate, adenosine tri-3 phosphates. Phosphates. So the third phosphate stores the most energy. <clears throat> that bond, molecularly. So creatine phosphate rephosphorylates ATP after that third phosphate has been taken off. This is the body's most immediate energy system. Uh, so it is very quick. All in all, it doesn't really last long, the ATP-CP system. It's for very short bursts um, and things like strength exercises. So, you normally and naturally will get creatine in your diet if you eat red meat or other sorts of animal proteins. Uh, I say red meat specifically because it has higher amounts. A lot of people choose to supplement with creatine. There are different kinds, creatine monohydrate, uh, there's Crea Pure, which is also a monohydrate. Um, and then there's a lot of different strands of creatine out there. Um, and that's up to you if that's what you want to do. But essentially what that's going to do, given that you are a responder, because there are some non-responders, creatine is going to increase the amount of creatine phosphate stored within the muscles and therefore give you a bigger pool of creatine phosphate to rephosphorylate ATP um, and should increase strength gains or increased strength. Now, creatinine. If I look at creatine as a good thing, I look at creatinine as a very bad thing. So what creatinine is, <clears throat> it is a marker for muscle protein breakdown within your bodily system. <clears throat> now, when blood creatinine levels are high, that normally means that your kidneys are unable to deal with the amount of protein that has been broken down in the blood. Um, that can do and what that can tell you is that you are in store for things like rhabdomyolysis, which can shut down your kidneys um, and do a whole lot of other stuff. Um, rhabdomyolysis is normally uh, from overexertion. So say I have been doing nothing at all. I have been completely inactive and I'm going to start going to the gym five days a week and going as hard as possible. This is not something I would recommend because you are a great candidate for giving yourself rhabdomyolysis. The way that you prevent creatinine levels rising and something like rhabdomyolysis, the two are going to be intertwined, right, um, is by something that we call the principle of progressive overload. That means you do something that is challenging but not overwhelming until it becomes to be, it starts to become less challenging. Now, I know that that sounds a bit confusing when you hear no pain no gain do you feel the burn and a lot of these other things that are just associated with hey pain's good go hard or go home no pain no gain right well let me be real here muscle soreness is not necessarily indicative of a good workout you can have a great workout and be getting results without being sore all the time now being sore can be a good indicator but it is not always. <clears throat> so if you are new to the gym and you are starting out, take creatine or don't, completely on you, but make sure that you do something to save yourself from rhabdomyolysis and high blood creatinine levels and go slow. A good coach will know how to start you off if you've been sedentary for a long period of time, they're not going to start you off in five days a week. Okay? 
You can try and do it yourself. The truth is, getting out there, get active, do something if you've been doing nothing is already a huge improvement, right? So you're already making progress just there. But don't go hard all the time. Don't feel like you have to kill yourself. Not only is it a health risk, but psychologically it is going to be very difficult for you to continue on that path on a regular basis. It's just draining, it's hard, it's very intensive. Not to say that as you progress, it's not going to take hard work, but you wanna build your way up and you don't wanna burn yourself out right away, right? So this is a very simple explanation of something. I hope that it has given us some insight and I will see you guys soon enough on the YouTubes. So I hope you guys have a great Thursday. Thanks for watching.